Hey guys, this is D Flash, and we're back with another video. Uh, this time around, we're going to take a look at the MX1 and the different effects settings on the mixer. So the MX1 is Roland's uh, kind of the key to tie all the new Ira gear together. It's a mixer, but they call it a performance mixer. So what what is made to do is to be able to take all the gear you have and make a live performance out of it. Um, and the mixer is kind of the key to tying it all together and then also performing with it. So to start, I've got my TR8 plugged into the USB 1 and a system 1 plugged into the USB 2. So we're going to take a look at the beat effects, the master effects, and the mastering. So to start, I'm going to play a pattern. And that's coming from the TR8. And then what we can do is I'm going to bring in just a chord from the system one. Okay, so there's not much to it right now. What we're going to do is kick in the beat FX. You can see right now it's set to a slicer. We're going to put it on side chain. So you can hear how that is ducking on the beat and we can put in a different pattern for the side chain. And then we can adjust the amount by pressing the BFX button and adjust the amount that the effect affects the channel. And the cool thing is that we can uh, we can have different beat effects on every single channel. Right now I have a side chain on every one, but you can see if we so we could also instead use a slicer. And then we can also use the filter. which kind of acts like a LFO on the filter. And the cool thing is that you can actually you still adjust the another filter on top of that pattern. And like I said, that's for every channel. We can have a different one. And now let's take a look at the master effects. We've got our delay and we have up to eight different delays.
And here's delay two. You can hear that has kind of a stereo effect to it. It's kind of like the ping pong delay in Ableton. This one kind of has a filter on it. And you can adjust the delay time. So it seems like this one goes wide when you go this way. And this one stays in the middle. I think this is the same one. All right, let's move on. Yeah, so this just pitches it. This is like a more of a reverb. Another reverb. Another style of a reverb. Move on to the filter. This one's really smooth, not very high resonance. Each filter seems to bring up the resonance just a little bit more. This one actually is less dramatic, the change that it makes. And this works a little more like a tone knob just accentuates or filters out just a little bit without being as dramatic of an effect. This one seems more like a self-resonating filter. Some of these I haven't even played with yet. Then we have scatter. Start at one. So this works like the scatter on the TR8 with the knob kind of working as a depth.
you can see how you can use these effects in different combinations to perform your tracks live where you have kind of just simple basic loops and the different ways you use them and mix them in and use the effects in the building of the track. Over the flanger. Oh, did we go through all of them? One more. your simple basic flanger to start out with and as with most of these effects they get a little bit more interesting each time you bring them up filter with the flanger. And this you can adjust the time on also. go from very dramatic, very long sweeps to something very quick. And all of them have time adjustments, so the scatter also has a time adjustment. Okay, so it seems like that's not as much of a time adjustment for the scatter. It seems like it's kind of messing with some of the filters that are used in the scatter. All right, where are we? Flanger, got two more. So flanger with a little bit of a bit crusher. And that's kind of the interesting thing is on the end of these different settings, they have some of the more interesting style effects that aren't as obvious what they're labeled. <laughs> they got a bit crusher. So I don't know if you saw the time adjust the type rather than a time parameter. Oops. This is kind of a crusher with a filter on it. Sounds like a little bit of an ant modeler. Thank you. 
Okay, so it seems like the type adjustment is only for a couple of them, not all of them. It doesn't do much for the others. And then we have a roll effect, which does exactly what you think it would do. Kind of like the scatter, just more basic. And I believe this is the time that it will sample for the roll. I'm not sure what the deal is with this one. Maybe we bring the time down. There you go. This is a roll with a filter on it. Oops. Don't kick the camera. Is your tape stop or vinyl stop? And as you can see, the time parameter on this one, just the time before it comes to a stop. And then the last ones would be our mastering effects. Uh, we'll start with one. You can see how it kind of glues everything together, brings out the low end, makes everything kind of pop. This one sounds a little more crisp. And according to the manual, the whole point of the mastering effects is to kind of make all your gear glue together the tracks and everything nicely so that it sounds as good as playing alongside someone with a CDJ or something like that. So it just kind of has a nice mastering chain. The limiter brings everything together nicely. So you can see that with all these different effects, you know, you can take the elements of your tracks that you've created and create a performance around it with builds and breakdowns and things like that so that you're not doing the same thing every time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me some comments and uh, make sure you check out the rest of the IRA videos that I've posted. Thanks again.